Hello guys, today I want to present to you my new course on Teachable Platform about Laravel testing. This is my 35th course in general, which I'm shocked to say that number every time I release something new. So roughly one course a month, this is my goal to release something. And I've been planning to release something about testing for quite a long time. Now it just came together. And I had a really old course, I won't even show it now, with Laravel 5 about PHP Unit for Beginners. So I took the basis of that, refreshed into new Laravel 9, added some new thoughts what I've learned since then, added this new microphone for audio quality, added topics of PEST and TDD, and basically refreshed everything so you would learn how to start testing in Laravel. And in this video, you will see three lessons from that course combined together into one YouTube video. If you want the full two hour course, you can get the link in the description below. Or of course, you can subscribe to yearly membership to get all of my courses currently, all 35 and everything I will release for a year ahead. And if we briefly take a look inside what's inside of this course at the curriculum, after a short intro, we are testing real product, real CRUD. Pretty simple project, but still a real life project, touching unit and feature tests, touching test of authorization and authentication, factories, testing API with JSON and stuff like that. Then a separate section I decided to touch on what we should test because that's one of the most popular questions. How do I decide what to test? Should I go for 100% so-called test coverage or not? What if my time is limited? What should I test first and stuff like that? So three videos about that. And then at the end, best example and TDD example. Everything in video, everything with repository on GitHub. So as usual, I'm trying to be practical, explaining the theory along the way. And this course is actually part one of the series what I want to do about testing in general. I've tweeted pretty recently when I decided on the topic of testing that there should be two separate courses. First, for beginners with the goal to learn to start testing because I've seen how careers evolve of developers. So first, get familiar with testing and write testing at all. Then you need to practice with that. Practice writing simple tests just to get the main things covered for the project. And then as you start working with more complex projects, you have totally different questions about testing. How to test a big project with complex functionality. And for that, I will create a separate course, hopefully within a month or so, about faking some data, faking something in Laravel, like sending email, events, queues, mocking the services or mocking classes and mockery in general testing external APIs and how to arrange all of that, using GitHub Actions to automate the testing as soon as someone pushes or opens a pull request and stuff like that. So more complex topics with practical examples from open source projects from well-known companies like Spidey. I have a lot of open source projects listed on my laravelexamples.com, so we will get through those as well. I'm excited to start working on that. But meanwhile, if you are at the beginning stages of your testing in Laravel, or if you haven't done that at all and always wanted to start, this course is for you. And now you will see three first videos of why testing, how to test, and first practical example. And the link to the full course will be in the description below. Let's start this course about automated testing about PHP unit and PEST and others in Laravel from a bit philosophical note why you should test your code with automated testing because probably you test everything manually right so you release a feature you want to release a feature and you click around and you test the buttons that they work that the database contains the correct data and all of that and you should do that there's nothing wrong with that but if you improve that feature and need to retest the whole thing again you do that manually for the second time it's okay but for the third, fourth, and fifth time, wouldn't it be cool to have some kind of a robot helper that would do that for you? Guess what? This is what automated testing is about. So a typical argument why people don't write automated tests I hear is we don't have time to write those tests. But if you think about it in the long run, it actually saves time because you don't need to retest the same thing for the second and third and fourth time. And imagine what happens if some other features are released and new developer who released those features needs to test their own code and also maybe your own related code. So they would need to click that manually as well or they would need to kind of trust the system that nothing broke down or wait for the actual production bugs to appear. What is the choice? 
So automated tests prevent from exactly that from happening. So you can retest the same things and catch bugs quickly before the code goes to production. And you can also automate that in various ways. So for example, if someone releases the feature and pushes the code to GitHub, you can automatically launch the test on some staging or testing server before even someone reviewing the code from the team. And then imagine the scenario that the project grows, new developers come, all developers go, maybe you leave the project, maybe others, new features. And for long-term projects, at some point, no one actually knows all the features how they should work, how were they working a year ago. So automated tests are kind of the fundamental line ensuring the quality of all their features for the long term. So if you want your projects to survive longer with fewer bugs, automated testing is kind of a no-brainer thing, especially since it's very easy to add the tests in Laravel. And this course will show you how exactly. On the screen, you see the default PHP Artisan test on a totally fresh Laravel project. So I haven't run any other Artisan command. I haven't added any lines of code and it already can run some tests. So in the next lesson, we will start practically looking at how to write tests and you will see that it's pretty easy, especially if you focus on the main, the most important ones in the beginning. In this video, I wanted to emphasize why. Now let's get into the how. So let's start the practical part and let's take a look at default tests that come with Laravel by default. You can see a folder called tests. Again, it's a fresh Laravel project. I didn't write any line of code. So there are feature tests and unit tests. And we will talk a bit deeper about the differences later in the course, but mainly most of your tests should be feature, which means you test some feature, whether it works or not. Unit tests are more about separate so-called units of your code, like a function test that the function internally works correctly. So we will focus most of that course on feature tests. And let's take a look what is the example test in the test feature folder. So example test is a class that extends test case and every test, like every feature to be tested is a function within that class. One class of example test or whatever you call that test may contain multiple functions. And in each function, you execute some code and then test or so-called assert that something happened and whether it's correct or not. For example, in this case, we get the homepage URL and assert that the status, HTTP status of that request is 200, which means all good and okay. To run those tests in the terminal, we need to launch PHP artisan test, and it will execute everything that is inside of our test folder, whether it's feature or unit, the list is here. I will open it up in a bit bigger window. So within test unit, test that true is true and test the application returns a successful response. And those texts come from the naming of the function. So you can see the naming of the function with underscores. It's kind of in a human language. So you can read that test that the application returns a successful response. So in general, while naming the test functions, you shouldn't be afraid to have longer test names, longer function names, because those would be readable when someone will launch the test in the future. So both tests are successful. Now, what happens if the test fails? Let's simulate that by changing some of the tests. For example, one of the popular assertions is assert that the request contains some text. So response assert C, there is a function assert C and what text? If we go to our homepage, this is our homepage. For example, we can see the text documentation and that will pass successfully. If we relaunch the test, what do we have? Both tests passed. But if, for example, we look for another text, like for example, Symphony on the Laravel homepage, right? Then we relaunch the tests again, and now it will fail. So one passed test and one failed test. And inside you would see which test failed and on which line. And then it would also show the actual error test failed that it contains symphony. So this is the actual response, the HTML response from our homepage and the error, if we scroll a bit up. So this is the error example test the application returns successful response failed asserting that this HTML contains symphony. So this is how failed test would look like, or let's see how it would like if we have two methods. So let's copy that 
and we may even remove the comments because they are not really relevant here and test the application for example contains symphony something like that test the application test the home page contains symphony so this one will be successful and this one will be a failed test probably let's launch and php artisan test gives us two passed test and one failed so each file of the test class should be related to some functionality and inside you test different parts of that functionality like for example one page and then various features of that page so you can see how easy it is to start testing most of the tests are just launching some page or calling some api and then testing if it is successful or not in fact there is a different kind of test specific kind of test called smoke tests which basically just go through all the pages and test if the page returns to 100 or whatever is the status code expected. Even that test coverage of all your pages of your application would be a great start to ensure that your application is working when you launch new features. All the other parts of the automated testing are about exploring different assertions and different ways how to simulate those different scenarios for specific pages or specific functionality. So we'll dive into that in the next lessons. Now let's start to write test for a real Laravel project. Simple project, but a real one. So I've prepared the project itself before the testing, but the code is written, or at least the beginning of the code is written. It will be just a list of products based on Laravel Breeze with really zoomed in version in my browser. It's just a products list. So in the controller, we have something like this, get the product, the model, in the routes web we have resourceful controller later we'll fill it in with create form edit form and stuff like that all the crud operations and in the blade we have a for each loop or for else to avoid the if for each and in case of empty products we have no products found which is exactly the case currently no products in the database empty table and first test that we will write is testing that the table is empty to create a new test we can run a command php artisan make test and you can call your test class however you want for example everything around products we will put in the products test class so products test and it will generate a feature test for us in the products test here in the test feature and it also generates example test for us so we would know the structure roughly and what we need to do this get products like this and then assert status, I will leave it as it is. So we test that the request is successful, but also we will add response, assert C, the text, assert C. And what are we looking for? For no products found. And I will copy that from index blade because it uses for translations for multi-language, the double underscore function. So I will copy and paste exactly this text here. And also let's delete our example test because we don't need that anymore. We will launch only product test and remove the comment because it's pretty useless to be honest. Or you can leave it and edit the contents, but I prefer for test itself to be readable without any comment, which leads me to renaming the function name. Instead of test example, it will be test homepage contains empty table, for example. And now let's relaunch our test. So PHP Artisan test will give us two past tests. The unit example test, which we will get to in later lessons about unit tests. So we focus on the feature tests and we have home page contains empty table successful. In later videos, we will test the product table to be not empty if there is at least one product. But for now, let's try to add a product to the database manually. So in here we have products, it's empty. For now, let's add test with one, two, three, with whatever name and price. And then we reload the home page. It should contain test and one, two, three price. And our test should fail at the moment. So we relaunch the test. Artisan test should be one passed and one failed. So assert C no products found is not true anymore. And let's create another test that would test that the home page table is not empty. So let's just copy those. Test homepage is non an empty table. Test homepage contains non empty table in case the products exist. And we will add those products to the database here directly. 
In the later lesson, we will learn how to do that on a separate database to not mess around with live data. But for now, let's just kind of violate the rules and create the product inside of the test. So we create the product like this with just name and price something. So what I'm showing now is not actually how people do that in test, but I want to simulate both scenarios, empty table and non-empty table. So price one, two, three, and then assert status should be still 200, but assert C should be false, which is the opposite assertion of assert don't C like this. And those both tests should be successful in case that database is empty at this point, then it gets filled with the product and then this becomes true. So let's truncate the table. Again, I'm playing around with totally demo data so I can do whatever with my database. With real data, you shouldn't do that and we will get in the next lesson how you deal with that. But for now, truncate the products. So the table is empty and now let's launch the tests. PHP Artisan test and three past tests. And if we take a look at the database, we refresh and we have that product created in the database within our test. So we simulated both situations, empty table and non-empty table.